Hey guys, Kat Calm here with Studio Sweat On Demand and we are here to talk about understanding heart rate zones and making sure you know how to calculate them properly because I get asked this question all the time. So when you're calculating your heart rate, the standard formula that you're gonna see out there is 220 minus age for your maximum heart rate. So that is supposed to tell you what your maximum heart rate is. I have a problem with this though because it's such an average, it's such a standard, it doesn't take into consideration anything personal about you. It doesn't factor in your individuality. Um, and so things like your resting heart rate, um, any special conditions that you might have, anything like that is not factored in when you're using a formula as simple as 220 minus age. So, it is a way to do it to figure out your max heart rate, which you need to figure out your zones, but it's not necessarily the best way to figure out what your max heart rate is. So there's something out there called the Carvonin formula, and that is spelled with a K. Okay, so, oh, sorry. There you go, Carvonin formula. My suggestion to you is that you Google Carvonin calculator and it's very simple to understand how to use it. It's gonna ask you a couple of questions and it's gonna spit out your uh, max heart rate and some of them will even spit out your different zones. What is a zone? Okay, a zone is how many beats per minute is your heart rate beating, okay? Um, and a zone is a percentage of the max. So what I mean, for example, is, and I'm gonna write these up here. There's 50 to 59%, and then there's 60 to 69, 70 to 79, you can see where I'm going, 80 to 89, and then 90 plus. I have great writing, right? I know it's the best. Zone one, right here, 50 to 59%. That means that you're doing very light activity. So that might just be a nice casual stroll, okay? That's your 50 to 59%. Light activity, for example, like a brisk walk, maybe with some rolling hills in it, would be your 60 to 69%, so zone two. Zone three, you're gonna be 70 to 79%. That is moderate activity. So maybe like a jog, or you're just coming out of warm up on your spin bike or something like that. Um, next, 80 to 89%, that's hard. That's pretty intense stuff. Um, and then 90% plus is going to be uh, maximum, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about how it feels at each of these zones. When you are at 50 to 59%, it's very light, right? So let's just talk about breathing. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with the talk test, so we'll go there. When you're in this zone, what it should feel like is that you should be able to have a very natural conversation without any interruption of your breath. Um, 60 to 69%, you should still be able to carry on a conversation, but you are aware of your breathing. Um, when you get into the next zone here, zone three, you're going to start to have a little bit of trouble having a normal conversation for sure. After each sentence, you should have to take a pretty big deep breath in. When you get to uh, the hard zone here, zone four, you should only be able to say about three to four words without having to take a nice deep breath in. You're starting to get to, uh, in all of these zones, you should be able to, zones one, two, and three, breathe in and out of your nose as long as you don't have a cold or something like that. But when you start to get into these two zones, you're pretty much uh, mouth only breathing. So, so just keep that in mind. This, uh, by the way, when you get down to this zone right here, it should feel like you're pushing like a car up a hill with all of your might or your child is stuck under the car and you have to lift them off of it. That's how um, it should feel when you're at maximum intensity. So this is often referred to as the red zone. Um, you don't wanna stay there for too long uh, because you've got your fat burning zone, which is these three, one, two, and, uh, excuse me, two, three, and four, are your fat burning zones. Um, when you start to go into zone five, you can actually start to burn muscle instead of fat. So you don't wanna stay there for too long. If you're truly in the red zone, um, your body's really only gonna let you stay there for anywhere between 10 seconds and maybe up to 120 seconds anyways. If you're able to, if you're looking at your app and it's showing you in the red zone and it's been three minutes straight, 
you're probably actually not in the red zone. And what that means is the max heart rate that you have entered is probably incorrect. So you really need to know what your max heart rate is. And in order to know your max heart rate, you need to know what your resting heart rate is if you're using the model like the Carvonen formula. Um, if you want to manually take your heart rate, you can do the old pulse test. And for example, you would find your pulse, um, you'd be looking at a timer, you'd time it for 30 seconds, for example, and whatever count you had, you'd multiply it times two to know what your resting heart rate was. You wanna take your resting heart rate um, if you're doing it manually, you wanna take it really early in the morning, first thing before you have any coffee or anything like that, preferably while you're still lying down in bed. Um, and another thing is wait for a couple of minutes if you wake up to an alarm, wait for a couple of minutes before you take it because that startles you, you know, when your alarm goes off. So you wanna be careful about that. Um, but anyways, so think about that and you're going to be entering in your resting heart rate into that, or your maximum heart rate into the Carvonen formula. When you do that, it's gonna spit out all of these different zones for you so that you can see um, what your beats per minute should be. So if you ever see that uh, acronym BPM, that stands for beats per minute, how many times is your heart beating per minute? So you'll see how those correspond to each of those zones. And, and that's how you know where you're at. And uh, those zones are really important. Now, one thing I want to keep in mind is when you should do this sort of heart rate training and why. Um, one of the reasons I like to do heart rate training is at least for me personally, it keeps me motivated. <laughs> When I know I'm supposed to be in you know, zone four, I'm gonna push to be in zone four if that's where my, my trainer tells me to be. If I'm stuck down here and I'm lollygagging, <laughs> I'm gonna know, pick up your pace a little bit. You're not working that hard. Um, and different types of workouts that you do should call for different zones. If I'm doing more of a recovery workout, I'm not gonna, wet, let, I'm not gonna want my heart rate to get up past maybe 75% max, right? Um, if I'm doing an interval training workout, I'm gonna to wanna to tap into the red zone, drop back down to maybe my light zone, maybe bounce back and forth between these two. Um, so, you know, there's a couple of ways that you can track your heart rate. Um, number one, by the way, is if you're using uh, some sort of heart rate tracking device like the MyZone, the Polar, the Wahoo. Um, so that's gonna be like a belt or a watch or something like that. And these days, typically that'll connect to an app. So you'll be looking at your app or you'll see it on your TV or something like that and it'll tell you what your heart rate is. Um, you can also use things like the scale of perceived exertion, which I'll let you look up on your own. Um, but for me, that is really motivating and I like the tools too. I like getting an email after my workout that tells me you were in these zones in, in, you know, throughout your workout. Here's how many calories you burned. Here's how many minutes you were working out. And uh, I find that personally very motivating. Um, and another thing too is things like, I don't wanna be burning muscle. So I wanna make sure I'm not staying here too long. But if you don't have the right data, uh, to, plug, to plug into your tracking device, then what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you're not getting accurate data and I know nobody wants that, so. Um, that's the why. As far as the when, um, any time. I find it valuable for every single workout, but it doesn't work for every single person. If you have any heart conditions like tachycardia, bradycardia, bra uh, bra bradycardia, sorry, that one's hard for me to say. Um, if you're on a beta blocker, for example, those things all are gonna throw your heart rate off. Heart rate training is not for you, so don't do it if you're in one of those categories, if you have any special conditions like that. Um, otherwise, you're free to do it. I actually encourage it. I hope that cleared up any of your questions, but if you have any more, make sure that you pop them as a comment below and I will try to get to them. And for those body sculpting, fat torching workouts, make sure you check out Studio Sweat On Demand where we show you what the heart rate zones are of the people that are working out in the class. Thanks.